Hey everyone, welcome back to Air Envision. Today I'm gonna to be talking about creating your job list for the Air Force. So this process has changed over time. You used to select jobs when you were at MEPS. Currently in 2021, the way the process works is you go to MEPS and once you swear in, you get a list of jobs that you are qualified for and all of that depends on how you did at MEPS and if you pass your vision and hearing and certain medical things. Um, you may get some jobs disqualified if you like didn't get a high enough score on certain things. So basically, once you pass MEPS, you swear in, you get your job list and you, you sign your contract at MEPS. But then after MEPS, you'll go to your recruiter's office. Today's the day. I am gonna turn in my job list to my recruiter and your recruiter will talk to you about the different jobs that you qualified for to help you create that list. But honestly, I suggest making a list of jobs beforehand. Don't wait until you find out everything that you're qualified for. I would go ahead and look over all the Air Force jobs and make a list before you go and then you can match up what you qualify for versus the jobs that you're interested in on your list. And if you wanna know how to make a list ahead of time, I actually made a video. So for me, I am joining out of Huntsville, Alabama and my MEPS location is in Nashville, Tennessee. And day two of MEPS is the day that you swear in after you pass. And it was a really long day. I have my video of MEPS day one and MEPS day two if you guys haven't seen those. And I literally go step by step of what the entire day was like if you want to go check those out. After MEPS was over, you wait until the shuttle takes you back unless you drove yourself. Regardless, you might have some distance in between your recruiter's office and where MEPS was. So I had a two hour ride back home. I was supposed to meet with my recruiter that day. Texted him and told him, you can just go ahead home because we're not going to be getting back until late. I had MEPS the other day, I swore in and it was on a Friday, it was the weekend, now today's Monday, so meeting back with my recruiter to turn my list in. So let's go in here and get it done. I just went into his office. He printed out the list of jobs that I qualified for, but I actually got that list at MEPS as well. I had already set up a list of jobs that I wanted to have. And then after I had the list of jobs that I qualified for, I matched everything up to make sure the jobs that I wanted were on the list that I qualified for. So I had my list of eight jobs ready to go, feeling real confident about it all. I'm like, let's go! This is it, this is the job that I want. And then just in case anything happened that I wasn't able to get one of those, I made a list of secondary jobs that I was going to fill into those spaces. So. That's kind of what ended up happening. You nervous? No. <laughs> I'm ready to do it. Watch yourself five seconds. Verbal bribery. A recruiter would have like talked to me more about all the jobs, but I had actually done my own research before, so I didn't need to. He just was like, okay, what do you want for your number one? Administration is my number one. Dad. And then he just filled it in, number two. And I had to do a list of eight jobs and one index or aptitude area. And those categories are admin, general, electrical, and mechanical. So everything's going good. I'm filling out my list the exact way that I want it to be. And then we got to the job paralegal. So that one we can't actually list down. That one you have to do an intercom for. That's something I saw online and I said that might be the case, but I didn't know so I still wasn't gonna list it until I found out. Which I'm actually kind of confused about because I have had a few people comment on videos here on Airman Division saying that they're getting ready to go to basic training and they're joining as paralegal. We did qualify for NDI. I know that's one you mentioned before. Yeah, these yeah, are but then I got afraid because of uh, somebody who was in the job for okay. the so cancer job. <laughs> so then I took off my list. I mean, you qualify <laughs> for a ton of good jobs. Uh, I had an empty slot now and I needed to fill it. But thankfully, I had like three or four jobs on my secondary list that I was gonna be like, you know, if something happens, I can't put one, I'm just gonna put one of those secondary jobs on there. All right, I locked in my job list. I'll explain later uh, what happened with uh, some of the jobs. I freaked out a little bit, but I finally made it official. But then when it actually came time for it, I started freaking out a little bit. I'm like, I don't know if I want to put one of these jobs now. I don't know. What should I do? And I had a really high ASVAB score. And my recruiter was like, oh, you should do a job like this or like this because like you have a high enough score for it. And I'm just like, I don't know what to do because ah, I made my list. So this wouldn't happen. I don't know. Under pressure. I'm like, pressure. so basically. 
basic training should be a fun experience, you guys. <laughs> I think it's gonna go great, but then in instances like this where I'm like, Russia. what is the right decision to make? We'll see. It'll be funny. You're better at being told what to do instead of, what do you want to do? It's not that simple. What it do you want? Yeah, instead of like choosing it for myself on the spot, I'm like, what is the right decision? I ended up not even using one of the secondary jobs that I put. My recruiter was suggesting me to do Intel jobs, which I had looked into those and I just decided like that's not a job that I wanted to do, but those are jobs that you can get with a higher ASVAB score. So that's why my recruiter was suggesting them to me. And since I had such a high score, he allowed me to put a second medical job on my list as long as the commander approved it. So this is the final list that I turned in to my recruiter. These are the jobs that I am waiting on and the admin index area. And yeah, I can't wait to find out what I get. A lot of the jobs that I have on my list don't require like a crazy high ASVAB score, which is why my recruiter was suggesting um, some of the other jobs. I just like to work with people and I think these would be good jobs for me. I want medical or admin and fingers crossed I get a job soon and it's one of the jobs that I want. And you said earlier you don't really care for high pressure situations. <laughs> yeah. And so like if you can't an tell. Intel job where it's like you need to get this information out now. Someone's life depends on it. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I would be smart enough for Intel, but like on the outside, I would be like freaking out. It's like, I have the knowledge, but not the composure that I need for it. But like I mentioned earlier, even though I did this and I still freaked out research ahead of time, make your list ahead of time have your secondary list just in case there might be something that you don't qualify for or there might be something like me where it wouldn't um, allow me to put it on my list. Um, so best of luck. I just wanted to share my job list with you guys and how everything went and I'm excited to find out what I get. I got my Air Force t-shirt. <laughs> I'm excited. All right, so we're good to go. He gave me a swag bag. If you are in Huntsville, Alabama, this is the guy to talk to. This is my recruiter, Sergeant Brandon Wheat. And then back here we have Sergeant Dustin Davidson. So if you guys are interested in joining the Air Force, come and check them out. Also in the description below, you guys can follow them on their social media. So if you guys have any questions, you can reach out to them there.